Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Been away for a little while, life's taken over, but we're back now and I've got some exciting videos coming your way. I'm also changing my golf clubs coming up, so I'm gonna be reviewing a whole load of irons, wedges, drivers. Make sure you subscribe down below, you're not gonna to wanna to miss those ones. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how I shoot under par 99% of the time. And I can tell you now, it's not always from hitting perfect golf shots. In fact, during a round of golf, I could honestly say I probably only hit one, maybe two shots that I'm really, really happy with. The rest of them, I'm just managing my game. These are some of the tips and tricks that I learned on the pro tours. And when you haven't quite got your golf game that day, how can you shoot under par not playing well? Surely there's a secret. There is. Let me talk you through what I'm thinking now. Okay, so first up, my golf clubs. I know how far I hit every single one of these golf clubs within about three or four yards. Can you tell me at home how far you hit your seven iron? What about your four iron? What about a half swing with a sand wedge? Do you know how far you hit that? If you don't know your yardages, guys, how can you be expected to step up to a par three and know the exact golf club? You're just playing guesswork the whole time. You've got to have a range of how far you hit that golf club. Because if you don't know, you're just playing a lottery every single time. So get up to the driving range, learn your yardages, have a gapping session. So number one, find out your yardages. It's really, really going to help you. A little plug for Rick Shields here. He did a video with Lee Westwood where he took him on 10 shot challenge. You probably all heard of it. And Lee Westwood actually had his yardages written on each of his golf clubs, actually on the back of the golf club. I've actually played rounds with pros who carry a little kind of piece of paper which just says how far they hit all of their golf clubs. And I know it sounds really basic, but if those guys are doing it, then why aren't we doing it? So I'm guessing at this point, you guys at home watch a lot of golf on TV and you would have noticed by now that when a pro golfer gets to their golf ball, they immediately pull out the magic book from behind with their caddy and start looking at yardages. I can tell you now, there's gonna be little images of greens on that book and they're gonna have little crosses and little ticks next to greens on certain sides they should miss and certain sides which are a no-go. And that is what all good players are doing. So guys, I've got a perfect example now, a really tough par three where I cannot miss it left. There's a ditch down there, there's water. It's like the end of the world if you miss it left. So I know that I've got to hit it right and I know it's a pretty easy up and down from over there. So let me show you. I'm constantly analyzing out here where the flag is, where the trouble is, where I do want to miss it, where I don't want to miss it, so I can manage things. Because when I'm not playing well, which is, do you know what? A lot of the time, to be totally honest, I only occasionally have those rounds where everything goes to plan. But most of the time, I'm just managing with what I've got for the day. So out there, I am just looking at certain flags and thinking, I do not want to go there. Or holes that I know where they have, might have loads of bunkers down the left-hand side. I will play my game just to plot it on the golf course, plot it on the green where I know it's a really easy putt or an easy chip, and I'm not gonna make it too hard for myself. But all good players are managing that in their mind and thinking, right, the next hole, flag's on the left. I know that I can't hit it over there today. I'll just knock it to the right of the green. Make it easy for yourself, guys. How many times in the last round did you hit it to about a foot? It doesn't really happen that often, so manage yourself out there and just look where the trouble is, because I am. And that perfectly leads me on to my final one. Stop trying to hit a straight, perfect golf shot. Now, I've done another video on this one because it's so interesting. I love this point. And when I say it to people, they're like, oh, Sam, well, you obviously got to try and hit it straight. I can honestly say now, I can't remember the last time that I tried to hit a straight golf shot. I am consistently trying to shape the ball with what I've got. So, for example, at the moment, I'm hitting about a two or three yard fade with pretty much everything in my bag. So I'm aiming two to three yards left of the target and letting it fade back. I'm not aiming straight at the hole and trying to hit it straight at the hole because that is the hardest shot in the world. If you look on TV now on the pro tracers that they have out there, hardly anyone hits a straight golf shot because it's just too hard. They're always just playing a shape on the golf course and making it easy for themselves. So guys, stop trying to hit the perfect shots. Stop trying to hit it dead straight because it ain't gonna work. Make sure you use a shape out there and stick with it. These three tips are so, so easy to add to your golf game. There is no excuse to get up to the driving range, get out on the golf course and just put these into play because 
you're going to get better with three really simple things. And to be honest with you, they're my kind of secrets. When I'm not playing well, that's what I go to. Managing myself better, using a certain shape on the golf course and just checking how far I hit all of my golf clubs because it's going to make life a lot, lot easier. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe down below. Please hit the like button. Comment if you've enjoyed this video and I will see you all at the next one. Thank you all. Cheers, guys.